help me understand sort of the shape of the assignment, the, the, you know, what was the task that you were given by this state department team to achieve? It was an assessment. So uh, there's official language somewhere, but it was to paraphrase, it was an assessment of the safety and security situation in, um, frontier AI and advanced AI generally. So advanced AI systems being, let's say systems that have general purpose capabilities. So going beyond the sort of traditional narrow AI pre 2020 era, um, yeah. And, and how did, how, like it, it, so it becomes basically, and I want to get all into this. It becomes basically like a detective, uh, story kind of a little bit. Like, it's like you guys are out there talking to whistleblowers, having clandestine meetings, like, you know, like all this really interesting stuff. How did you guys physicists uh, who were in tech companies decide that like, we're the guys to put on the detective hats for this job. I think you guys did an amazing job. I'm so glad you did it. I'm just, I'm just curious as to like that, that moment where you're like, man, this is going to be like fundamentally different work than we're used to doing. I think to, to quote a friend of ours, there, sorry, I was just, okay, sorry. And just to quote, quote a friend of ours, I think a big part of this is if not you, who, if not now, when, right, we were looking around and frankly, um, the AI safety community, uh, is, is interesting. We do not identify with any community, which is helpful because we have an external, like we're, we don't belong to the like Berkeley ecosystem or the effective altruist ecosystem or any of these things. So we were able to kind of look from the outside as if we belong to a, a community, we belong to the community of like Silicon Valley startup founders um, and sort of like y, YC baked into our bones. And from that perspective, you look at the AI safety ecosystem and it really seems like there is a lack of action orientation and um, sort of agentic um, uh, vibe to to these people. You talk to people at, yeah. at at parties, right? And they'd be like, "Oh yeah, I just heard this." Cra <laughs> Speaking of bad security at the labs, oh yeah, I just heard this crazy rumor at, at my lab that the next generation of models coming out and they're testing it with no uh, no sandboxing, no safeguards, whatever. And among other things, you'd be like, "Okay, cool. Well, that seems really important." Um, what are you doing with this information? I mean, like you seem genuinely distressed and sometimes the distress is real like and, and, and legitimate. Other times people do freak out for nothing and it's important to kind of tune that, that dial a bit. Um, but certainly there were cases where we'd hear stuff. We'd be like, this calls for action. Like every startup founder bone in our body was like, yeah, what you do with this is you pick it up and you, you do a freaking thing with it. Like that's, that's how, you know, <laughs> that's how the world moves. DOD, particularly DOD, already has an extremely strong existing safety culture. Not that obvious from the outside, but if you think about it, it's like, yeah, of course they do because their shit kills people and they need to make sure that the shit that kills people is as safe as possible because it kills people. It's designed to kill people. Yeah. And so yeah. when you engage with DOD, like there's an entire, there are entire organizations and all of the services that are around testing and evaluations. Even before, you know, G chat GBT, there was an existing AI test and evaluation organization inside the Air Force, inside OSD, which is the office of the Secretary of Defense and, you know, covers the armed services broadly. Um, and we spoke to and engaged with these folks. You think about, you know, this is a common objection where people say, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't have government regulate this space effectively because you're not going to have the talent on board well, we have the literal inventor of one of, if not the cutting edge AI safety technique used on planet Earth today at the world's top AI labs, who chose to work for the US government because that was where the influence is greatest. When all the labs are racing, no one has agency, no one's in control. So control ends up shifting. If you want to actually steer the ship, you got to think one level of abstraction higher. You got to move to the government, to the regulatory level. That all, Everybody sees the same chessboard. They see it all. They know that Sam Altman's next move. It looks just like Demis's next move at DeepMind. It looks just like Satya's next move. Scale more, race to AGI. That means you're not actually fundamentally in control. If you want to shift the course of history, you do it from the higher level of abstraction, USG kind of regulatory space. You know, we're in a, in a room with one of the labs and at the end of the meeting, um, there's a guy who kind of stands up and he, he saunters over uh, to me and he, he's like, hey, can you give me your phone uh, so I can put my my number in it? Um, and then he says, uh, whatever your recommendations are going to be, I would just urge you to please be more ambitious. And so we're like, okay, that's sort of interesting. Well, let's, let's chat offline. We ended up meeting him later uh, at another location. And he sort of, he started to share that essentially in his view, his lab couldn't be trusted. Um, they were 
being irresponsible on both the safety and security sides. He was really concerned about uh, weaponization and loss of control. Period. Do they own the security risk? Do they do they concede the point, or are they like, no, we got oh. this, it's fine, or are they like, no, we're Swiss cheese? So, uh, well, yeah, I mean, internally for many of the labs, the sense, is, the self-assessment is like, yeah, we're Swiss cheese. 